Thank you for coming to our site. While you're here, if you can like and subscribe and share our content, we're trying to grow. And for those who would like to comment, make comments and I will gladly answer, uh, do the best I can. Make sure that we have an engaged audience. If there's something you guys would like me to talk about and teach about, just let me know and we can do that as well because I love sharing the Word of God. And for those who would like to support us financially, there are links also provided for that. And I appreciate everything that you can give and I thank you so much. It is an honor to serve and I look forward to continue bringing you guys good content. Good morning and welcome to my morning rant. We are going to continue studying about healing of the man. Yesterday we studied uh, healing for the spirit and today we're going to focus on the soul. I think I'm going to stay here for a little while, for maybe one or uh, two podcasts because uh, the soul, as you know, it is uh, broken up into three just as the spirit. But the spirit of mankind is um, healed by one single decision, and um, it causes an immediate effect, according to the Word of God, that uh, transition from a dead spirit to one that is alive. And so we were born, as it says, by the first Adam, as we spoke yesterday, and we became a living soul. And the last Adam tells us that we uh, became a living spirit. So uh, uh, that's how the spirit of man is healed. So those that are not born again, you will not know God ever. So uh, you may think you do, but since he is the one that created us, it would be beneficial for you to believe him because he has a fixed for that, if you will. And so yesterday we saw what the fix was. So today we are going to just begin to open up a little about the soul. We know that the soul has a couple of compartments, and that those compartments, as we studied before, is the mind, uh, we have the will, and the emotion. Now, when you and I uh, in, get involved in different relationships and stuff like that, because again, if we are uh, absent of the spirit as far as our spirit man, that's corrupt. He's dead and he's, um, you know, separated. So we are operating in this soul um, uh, form. And so the Bible tells us that out of the, the heart, the issues of the heart, and, and we saw what those were in previous um, studies. And I've showed you guys about, you know, I think I mentioned when we first started about this thing, uh, spirit, soul, and body. I, I quoted to you guys, I think it was in Luke, um, chapter one, verses 46, I think, and 47. And that's Mary singing her song, you know, and she states that my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has exalted in my, in God, my savior. So, you see that she is worshiping God with all of her, you know, because she's using, of course, her mouth and so forth. So her soul magnifies and her spirit exalts. So we are getting again, digging deeper to see that who we are. And that is why I want to tell you guys that you are very precious. Every single one of you, man, um, don't believe what people say about you. Believe what God says about you. People don't, a lot of people don't uh, care about you. They just want things and they will use you and you'll see that. But your value is tremendous. And that is why I would tell people, each and every one of us, we are an endangered species because your soul is specific to you. When you leave, your soul leaves, you are, and even your fingerprints, your, uh, the tone of your voice, your uh, eye, your retina scan, fingerprints, all of those things in the natural that the body um, produces and your voice and all those different things, 
that are making billions of dollars out of industries. The police department is running on that, all of it, any kind of those type of department, face recognition, all of those things shows how unique you are, even in twins, their uniqueness in twins. And so um, you are very special. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not. And we've talked about the soul, and the soul is partitioned into several parts, the thoughts of mankind and uh, where the thought comes to us. And we begin to use our imagination in that area with of our thoughts and so forth. We consider things there in our thoughts. That's what shows up there. Um, we will also remember things within our thoughts that we store in our emotions. Anything that is been stored in you, you will remember it because it is stamped by your emotions. So the um, we this uh, the soul of us. And let me take you to a couple of scriptures, the soul of mankind, and um, I always say the soul of us, but uh, let's see in Psalms chapter 13, verses 2, it says, How long must I wrestle with my thoughts, and day after day have sorrow in my heart? So those thoughts that he is dealing with, they have already lodged within his heart. And they're causing an emotional response. And that's what happens to you and I. And God is here to heal all of that from our thoughts, from our will, and from our emotions. And most of us, we see and experience the pain within our emotions. And... um we see that when, again, and I, may, I started to you as far as um, uh, when you have an emotional um, uh, breakup of some sort, uh, whatever, you know, you will feel some pain. And so as you are now, and you guys should by now understand uh, what the soul consists of. We talked about the thoughts, and then the second part that we mentioned is the will. Job 7.15 says, so that my soul would choose, and um, verses, I think Job 6, 7, we use that as well, my soul refuses, and the Revelation, actually, Revelation has a wonderful part about this, Revelation twenty two seventeen, which I didn't think I used before, when it says, let him who wills take water of life freely. That's what's inside in your your decision-making in your soul. That's a part of you. And again, your emotion, which we talked about, uh, God says, they that draw back, my soul hates. Uh, 1 Samuel 36, uh, 30 verses 6 says that the soul of all people was bitter. Um, Song of Solomon is a good one. 1 7 says, you whom my soul love. And so we know then that those are the chambers that are housed within the, uh, the soul of mankind. And then we talked about that area that is the depository the um, uh, that holds all of that some stuff. You, you may call it your warehouse. Your warehouse, you go into your warehouse and you access all the stuff that you have stored in your warehouse or your storage uh, area that you have or your closet, if you will, um, if you don't have a storage. But you know what I'm talking about. It's where you have some stuff stored that you, when uh, a situation comes up and you need it, you go there and you grab it and then you use it. And that's the same uh, thing that happens to you and I. When a situation comes up in our life, we will go into that storage bin, which is our heart, that we have deposited a bunch of thoughts that we have decided that we want to own it and we have our emotional stamp. And then when that situation comes up, we start responding a certain way and, you know, it uh, all hell breaks loose. So we're going to look at the soul. And so I wanted to now begin to lay a good foundation on that. So we see uh, for... Who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man? So we talked about that yesterday. So you have your spirit, okay? Because remember, 
God put that spirit in. He is the candle of the Lord that he is now going to search the inner parts of you. What are the inner parts of you? Your heart. Uh, he has to get in there and excavate all those stuff that you have, your, you know, your thoughts, your uh, will, and um, your emotions, and your heart. He's going to excavate all those things to see what's in there and see, because the Bible says once you've deposited in your heart, it is you, and you will speak from your heart. And you always hear people say, speak it from your heart, and whatever they put in there is what they're going to bring out. Let's see, let's take a look at Psalm 103, the chapter, uh, verses 2 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgive all your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases, who redeem your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So we see some stuff here that uh, bless the Lord that this psalmist and you know David he is um, blessing the Lord because some of the stuff that he has his soul has received forget not all of his benefits. So. He's talking to himself. Don't forget all these benefits that God, he has forgiven our iniquities. And we know that iniquities and forgiveness of sins and all of those things, that's dealing with our spirit and our soul. And we know that the body is a different animal altogether. But uh, we know that this forgiveness is for all of us, all spirit, soul, and body. And we know that he heals our diseases. He's uh, directly dealing with our body there, redeem us from destruction. We know that the penalty for sin is death, but also destruction in life, meaning your situations that have come up before you that is designed to destroy you. For the Bible tells us that the enemy, all he can do is steal, kill, and destroy the life the father of lies, all of these things. So he doesn't have anything in him that is worth anything because he came to Jesus and he showed his hand everything that he owns because he took Jesus at the top of the mountain all over and says to him, all this has been given to me. And we know that it was Adam, that, that first Adam that did that. And then Jesus was looking at him thinking, boy, you were on borrowed time, you have no idea. And that last Adam stripped him. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ went down, who his soul went down because he said to him, he said uh, on there, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. But Jesus' soul went down there and kicked the devil's butt and preached the gospel and talked about but this is uh, uh, with Abraham's bosom, those member Lazarus and uh, the rich man. Jesus went over there where Lazarus was, where Abraham was, and he began to preach the gospel. You know, you remember, guys, that those things that the prophet talked about, Abraham, you remember when you saw, this is, uh, I am he. And the Bible tells us, and I always tell you guys, that Jesus is the centerpiece of all. because who, they in the Old Testament were looking forward, uh, looking forward, looking to him, and we are now looking back at him because he came, he died, and so forth. So, but Jesus Christ was being preached in the Old Testament, and he also was being preached in the New. And all those, uh, the tabernacle, how it was designed, and all that stuff is all about Jesus Christ. Um, the high priest, that's about it. I mean, all of it, all of it was about Jesus Christ. This was the plan that God had in place in order to redeem his uh, creation back, all of it. And so Jesus Christ was the center of it. So we see then that uh, the psalmist began to recite some of those things, those benefits that he got. Psalm 32, 
Um, Psalms 3, 22, sorry. My wayward children, say the Lord, come back to me and I will heal you uh, from your wayward heart. And so again, that is dealing with the soul. That is that warehouse that you have stored all of your pain, your um, your shortcomings, all of it is in there. Your emotional damage from your relationships, from all of those names that mom and dad call you or your friends call you, it's living in and stored in that warehouse. And um, uh, I'll tell you why. So a song will come on you. You've been through your breakup. You know you 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 got over it. You think you did, and um, you've been living pretty good. And then one day you are in your car driving somewhere, and that song comes on. And what will that song do? That song will trigger your thought, a memory. Where did it trigger it from? It is already stored within you in your um, storage bin, if you will, as we were talking about your warehouse. And then that emotional stand kicks in. You start remembering. And next thing you know, you're crying and you're a big mess. And so God has to come and heal you from all of that. And so how do we do that? The Bible tells us in Third John 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that my, uh, you may prosper in all things, um, be in health. I pray that you prosper in everything and in good health as your soul prospers. So you have to fix that part of you so that it then emanates to all the other aspects of you because your spirit needs a partner to now come together to be in faith because if you're if you're separated if your spirit and your uh, soul is not in union you are not in faith do you understand this if your spirit and your soul differ in their belief you will never be in faith because there these are the two that need to come in. Your body is not going to agree with nothing because the body tells you, uh, tells us what the body is. The body is the instrument by which all the stuff, you know, that uh, uh, is going to be used to, to that is in your heart, you know, all, you know, whatever it is in there. So the two parts of you that has to come into partnership are an agreement, and usually the agreement after agree on the word they have to now excavate that pain and we do that in many different ways some people go see counseling and all that stuff some people don't even know where the pain is a lot of times we suffer trauma from childhood traumas from our parents and from family and we have to go and excavate ourselves so that we can find where that emotional stamp is hidden so that we can then excavate it and begin to clean some stuff up and so, what we'll do is, uh, let me take a couple more uh, scriptures because uh, I figured this one is going to be several before we get into um, all of the details as to it. So, just bear with me for here, but I want to encourage you guys. Um, you know, the psalmist says, Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all of his benefits. You forgive all of your iniquities and heal all of your diseases who redeemed your life from the pit. Remember. <laughs> where the soul is going when based on the decision that you make. So if you're born again, he has given you all of these beautiful things and the psalmist is reciting them. And uh, I want to leave you guys with this one because it tells us in Exodus chapter 15, verses 26, I am the Lord who heals you. So we know that we have a healer that is here to work and heal this soul of ours. One of the scriptures that you're going to see is Psalms 23. It's a beautiful scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. He, he starts off. And, you know, David talks about how he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. I mean, this beautiful picture that he begins to um, speak about. And then he ends it and he says, 
He restored my soul. And so we are broken, guys. All of us are broken. Trauma breaks us. And however that trauma got into you, whether it's mom or dad or however, a husband, divorce, um, uh, abuse, however that trauma got there, there is an answer. It is lodged within your uh, soul, which is stored in your heart. And it just takes a simple um, trigger, if you will, to bring it back to your memory in your mind to start um, creating all those habits in you. And so what we're going to do is pick this up tomorrow, all right? We have a lot to uh, talk about, but I just wanted to leave that with you, that beautiful picture that there's a promise according to Psalms 23 that he has the ability to restore. He restored my soul. And so that is a beautiful, one of my favorite um, phrases, if you will, in the Bible. He restored my soul. So we're going to take a look and see how does he do that. What are the mechanisms in place? What are those things that God has given to us so that we can utilize it? Uh, we know that He loves us and all these things. So He then He has to be He had to um, put some things together so that we can use and start to help help walking with God and working with Him to restore our soul. The Bible said that the just shall live by faith. It also dictates that we walk. By faith, not by sight.